Hey there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to answer the question you see here, which gives a rational function f of x, which equals a polynomial over another polynomial in the numerator, the polynomial is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. And in the denominator, the polynomial is x squared minus 4. We're going to answer all seven parts of this including number one to find the domain, number two to find the y-intercept, uh, number three to find the x-intercepts, four, the x value of any holes, five, the vertical asymptotes, six, horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes, which is number seven. Uh, number six and number seven, only one of those will have an answer. One of them will be does not exist. So horizontal asymptotes, if there's a horizontal asymptote, there will not be an oblique or slanted asymptote. If there is an oblique or slanted asymptote, then there will be no horizontal asymptote, okay? So oblique means slanted, like a line y equals mx plus b that is not horizontal. Horizontal would be y equals a constant. Vertical asymptotes are x equals a constant. Okay, so let's get to work here. The first thing that we should do is to factor both the polynomial in the numerator and the polynomial in the denominator so that we can clearly see a lot of things that will help us find the answers. Uh, the numerator here has a common factor of x, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that out first. And that leaves me with a quadratic polynomial times x. And I know how to factor quadratic polynomials, so that's convenient. In the bottom, I have a polynomial that is quadratic. It's missing the middle x term. And it is a difference of perfect squares. So those factor where you have the square root, the square root of each term, and uh, a positive in one set of parentheses and a negative in the other set of parentheses. All right, so now we can go to the next step of just factoring this portion here so that we have it factored completely. So the bottom will stay like it is. It's already factored all the way as far as it can be. In the top, we have the x outside, and now we're going to factor the uh, quadratic polynomial into two binomials. Uh, since the lead coefficient is x, it's going to be pretty simple to do so. Also, since negative 3 is prime, we know that it's going to be a 3 and a 1. And then we just have to pay attention to the signs here. Uh, we know we're going to have one of each since it's a negative 3, and that the larger number will have the negative in front of it. So we're going to give the negative to the 3 and the positive to the 1. Okay. So now that this is fully factored, let's see if we can answer each of these questions. First of all, the domain in interval notation. Well, the domain is all the sets of all is the set, excuse me, the set of x values where uh, any value that we plug in for x, we get a real number answer. And what we want to do is identify the values that would create a not real number answer or a number that doesn't even exist. Now, if you ever have zero in the denominator of a fraction, then you get an undefined result. So anything that would make this denominator equal zero should be excluded from the domain. Now notice that if I set each one of those factors in the denominator equal to zero and solve for x, I will get um, x cannot equal two and x plus 2 cannot equal 0 will yield x cannot equal negative 2. So those are two numbers that should not be included in the domain, right? So we are going to start from negative infinity, come up to negative 2, then jump over it to the union and go all the way to positive 2, and then do another union I'm just going to erase this so that we can complete this. And do another union from 2 to positive infinity. And that's the answer to number 1. 
for number two, we want to find y-intercepts. Now, y-intercepts happen where the graph of the function would cross the y-axis. And on the y-axis, x is always zero. So all we need to do is plug in zero for x, and we will figure out what the y value is, right? So we're looking for a point that has zero for x and some y value, okay? Now you can either do this with your original polynomial, which looks like it would be pretty easy to do that. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take my original poly, or excuse me, not my original polynomial. I meant to say my original um, function before it was factored and just plug in zero. So I have zero cubed minus two times zero squared minus three times zero over zero squared minus four. So I just plugged in zeros everywhere there was an x. The top simplifies to zero and the bottom simplifies to negative four. So the whole thing simplifies to just zero. So the y-intercept is at the origin zero, zero. And that is number two answered. Number three the x-intercepts. Okay, now x-intercepts are the reverse of the y-intercepts. It's where you're on the x-axis, so the y-value is always zero for an x-intercept, okay, and there can be more than one. So what we want to do is set the function equal to zero and solve for x. So the function will be zero whenever the numerator is zero. So I'm going to take my numerator and set it equal to zero. And I took it in factored form because if any one of these factors equals zero, then the whole numerator will become zero. So we're going to set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. So this is already solved. Uh, if we add 3 to both sides here, we get x equals 3. And if we subtract 1 from both sides here, we get x equals negative 1. So I actually have three x-intercepts, one at the origin and one at 3 comma 0. And let me erase this one more at x equals negative 1. Okay, now we're moving on to number 4. Number 4 says x value of any holes. All right, now holes occur when you get a factor in the bottom that cancels out with a factor in the top. So if you see an identical set of parentheses, once it's in, once your whole, um, function is fully factored like we see it here. Okay, so I'm just looking at this factored version of the original uh, rational function. And I'm looking to see if there are any sets of parentheses in the top that are identical in the bottom that we could cancel out. And there are none here, so the answer for number four would just be does not exist. Okay, there are no holes here. Okay, so we're done with that one. The vertical asymptotes of this polynomial would occur at the discontinuities or the uh, values of x that were excluded from the domain. So remember we said that x could not equal 2 and x could not equal negative 2. So those are the equations of the vertical lines that make our vertical asymptotes. So the answer is for here x equals negative 2 and positive 2, because it already has the x equals part. We're just going to put in the value separated by a comma. This is a comma. Okay, so that is number 5 done. The horizontal asymptote, if there is one. Now, what we do is we look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Really, we're kind of focusing on what happens when we divide x cubed 
by x squared. Um, since the top is power 3, it increases faster, much faster than the denominator. This increases slower. So what that means is that your, your top is always a great deal, or especially as you get larger and larger values of x, your top will be a great deal larger than your bottom. And so eventually this is all just going to approach infinity. So there, there really is no horizontal asymptote because there's never going to be a place where the y value can't hit, right? So um, this is something to review from the textbook. There's three cases where either the degree of your numerator is larger than your de the degree of your denominator, and so there is no horizontal asymptote like in this case. And there are other cases, you know, where the the degree of your numerator could be smaller, and then y equals zero would be your answer for the horizontal asymptote. Or if the degrees are the same, and then you take the ratio of the two lead coefficients. So I'm just giving you a quick reminder to re, uh, read that from the textbook. There's, um, you know, some basic guidelines of how to know what your horizontal asymptote should be if there is one. Now, because there wasn't a horizontal asymptote, what we can do is see if there's an oblique asymptote, which means slanted, right? So it's going to be y equals mx plus b. And to find it, what you want to do is long division, or synthetic if you can, but since this one has um, a quadratic in the bottom instead of a linear term with a lead coefficient of 1, synthetic won't work here, synthetic division. We're going to do long division here. So let's go ahead and set up our long division on the next slide. So we're really just working on this last part here. So we're going to divide x squared minus 4 into x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x and remember that you don't want to have any powers skipping. So we had a power of 3 in our divide, uh, dividend here under the division sign. We had a power of 3, a power of 2, a power of 1, and you could put a constant there to hold the place of the constant. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to always look at the lead terms and divide. So x cubed divided by x squared would leave x. So that's going to be part of our quotient here. And then we're going to multiply x times the divisor. And that gives x cubed minus 4x. If you need a reminder of how to do long division, maybe um, go back and watch one of the long division videos. And then you're going to subtract that. So I'm going to do x cubed minus 4x, and then I got to subtract that whole quantity, so I'm going to be distributing the negative and changing both signs here. So it's going to be a negative x cubed and a positive x to uh, 4x. So this will cancel, then we have negative, and that's supposed to be a square. Oh no, it's not. I need to line this up differently. That, um, I thought I had dropped my square, but no, it is 4x. That 4 minus 4x is going to go over here, lined up with the negative 3x. The sign changed. So this comes down negative 2x squared. And then negative 3x plus 4x leaves positive x. And then we do that process all again. <coughs> so we're going to look at the lead terms. We're going to do negative 2x squared divided by x squared. That'll leave negative 2. So that's going to go in our quotient. And then we actually can stop right here because that will be our slant asymptote equation, y equals x minus 2. Um, normally, if you're doing long division, you would continue this process until you had either a remainder of 0 or 
Um, let me show you what you would normally do if you were just doing long division. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, let's do uh, negative 2 times the divisor x squared minus 4. That would give you negative 2x squared plus 8. And you would keep going. This 8 can be lined up with the constant here. We would have brought that down from here. So we'll go ahead and line up the positive 8 here. Remember to change the signs because we're subtracting. And this would have canceled out and I would have had x minus 8. And uh, this is the remainder. Okay. Which, when you're writing the quotient with the remainder, it would be x minus 2 plus x minus 8 over x squared minus 4. Okay, now that's how you would do it if you were just supposed to find the quotient using long division. But I stopped as soon as I had x minus 2 up here instead of going all the way and finishing my quotient. Because when you're looking for an oblique asymptote, what you want to do is find the line equation y equals mx plus b and ignore the remainder. Okay, so that's it. That's finished. That's a pretty good problem. It allows you to review a lot of very important things to consider when you are graphing a rational function.